We work hard at Nameless Seraphim Gaming to make our content suitable for a general audience, but it is important to note that our channel is intended for the grown-up hobbyist. We will try to provide warnings like this one, where we spot a particular content issue you may not anticipate, but parental discretion is always advised with our videos. In this video, we'll explore a painting technique that specifically enables painters to reveal more skin on certain types of model. Whilst we don't believe the miniature used crosses the line of decency, this is a personal perspective, and we recognise the portrayal of the female form in the miniature hobby, whilst not debated in this video, can be problematic. If you'd prefer not to watch such content, we respect your view, and hope some of our other videos will be more to your liking. Thank you. Kick around the miniature painting hobby long enough and the concept of painting sheer fabric is quite likely to come up. It describes a fabric that possesses a translucent quality, therefore revealing some of whatever is beneath the fabric. And yes, let's face it, what is beneath the fabric is very often a woman's womanly bits. Setting the subject matter aside for a moment, painting sheer fabric on a miniature provides a very specific painting challenge. Trying to make the fabric look neither opaque, fully transparent, nor soaking wet, unless the last of these is deliberate of course, is not as straightforward as laying down a simple base coat of paint. It is not a technique that I have attempted more than once before, and I felt that a small model like Medea was a good opportunity to practice without investing too much time into an approach that I might end up painting over. When I attempt a technique that is new to me, I will use all the free resources of the internet to assist me. In this case, I particularly looked at reference photographs of fabrics to help me understand how light, the fabric, and the skin beneath interact. This sort of research is helpful whatever you are trying to paint, from object source lighting to animal fur, and I find it really helps me to visualise my end goal. I prepared the model off camera, removing as many mould lines as I could, and created a more interesting base by removing the model adding a thin layer of green stuff and creating a very simple tile effect using a modelling knife before my usual zenful priming technique. I started, as I often do, by attempting to paint the eyes. On such a small model this was difficult and made no easier by trying to get the process on camera, but essentially I painted the entirety of the eye with pure white paint, any brand will do, and then attempted to add the pupils towards the top centre of the area. Any overspill was painted over with black, creating the possibility of an eyeliner-like effect once the skin was added. At this stage, the eyes were far from perfect. Sometimes I find applying the base coat for the skin reveals that the eyes are not as bad as they first appear, but in this case I did end up adjusting the eyes slightly later in the process. Fortunately, my paints were kept thin, giving me the scope to do so. Later in the process I would have to grow a pair and paint in Medea's teeth, which are somewhat unusually for the scale of model, sculpted and therefore unavoidable, but for now I was in denial. I then used my favourite approach to Caucasian skin. I first applied a base coat of game colour tan to all areas of the model that were exposed to skin. I used a relatively large brush to achieve a smooth and even coat quickly and diluted the paint just below the normal base coat consistency to let the zenful highlight just about show through. I added some game colour dark flesh tone to the mix and used this to rough in some of the shadows to areas of the skin that were recessed or away from the imaginary light source, such as under the chin, between the shoulder blades and so forth. For this size of model, if you keep this coat thin, it will blend with the base coat without any complicated techniques being required. Once I was satisfied with the shadows, I added some Vallejo Panzerace's flesh base to the base tone and then used this mix followed by almost pure flesh base as my highlight layers.
careful application of highlights on flesh can create the impression of bones and muscles that would not be especially visible otherwise, such as the collarbone and shoulder blades. The face is also a very important area for highlights, and I will typically go one highlight further here, as it helps to draw attention to the facial features. Crucially, I stopped short of an even brighter highlight at this stage. I wanted to leave room for a further highlight once the dress and the sheer fabric had been applied if I felt it needed it. For the technique I planned for the sheer fabric, it was important to first lay down the dress as if it was fully opaque, including all layers except the brightest highlight. If you look at photos of white sheer fabric dresses, they often look like they are a very pale blue-grey colour at their thickest. Sombre grey from Vallejo Game Colour is a similar hue, and I added a small amount of it to white in order to get a base coat for the dress, which I applied all over. Once done, I added some model colour dark sea blue to the base coat mix and roughly applied this to the shadows. This was not my best work. I didn't expect the sheer technique to turn out so well and initially had conceived this video as an experiment in speed painting. As a result, I was trying to move quickly and my paint was too opaque to create the effect I wanted. With hindsight, it's a shame I rushed this step as the model would have looked much better if I'd taken my time. Ironically, I also spent a lot of time later in the process trying to tidy my earlier work and never quite got it perfect. Nevertheless, I think you get the general idea. Once the shadows were in place, I added white to my base coat to create a first highlight, which I applied thinly to upward facing areas. Again, we will return to do a further brighter highlight while I waited until after the sheer fabric was completed for reasons that will become clear. For the sheer fabric areas, we are going to create two colours on our wet palette. The first is a combination of a little Vallejo Panzer Aces highlights flesh with the tone we created for our dress highlight. The second also uses highlights flesh, but this time we are mixing it with the base tone for our dress and I added a touch of game colour tan to add some warmth to this tone. If you think about it, this makes sense, as what you are looking at on these parts is the fabric from elsewhere that is filtering the colour of the skin beneath. I used Highlights Flesh to keep the overall shade bright, as the areas we are painting are also invariably areas where most of the light would catch. This step is all about the consistency of your paint. You want this to be really thin so that you are just tinting the colour of the cloth with the flesh tone. However, whilst your paint will be watered down significantly, you don't actually want your brush to be heavily loaded with water when you apply it to the model, as you will lose control of where the pigments are being applied and how heavily. It may help to use a larger brush to achieve the consistency of paint on your palette, and then use a separate brush to actually apply the paint so that it is not overloaded. Apply the lighter tone first to the areas of the cloth that are stretched flat by Medea's body. You'll be painting this on top of the fabric that is already there, but once dry your eyes will interpret it as being underneath the cloth layer. Use the darker, warmer tone to blend the edges of your lighter layer with the dress. On this scale of model, these two coats are sufficient to create a smooth transition from the areas where the dress is more opaque to the areas where you can see hints of Medea's skin beneath. However, our final dress highlight is what will really sell this effect. I added even more white to our previous dress highlight to create this final highlight stage and let it continue towards the areas of the sheer fabric to create the impression that the fabric doesn't end before these areas, but in fact provides coverage over them. This is most evident on Medea's derriere, 
where these super thin highlight lines create the impression of small folds and imperfections that stop the fabric being completely transparent. This is a great example of a quick step that makes a lot of difference. Reviewing how the model now looked with the shear sections in place cemented my view that a further highlight on the flesh would be beneficial, so this was my next step. I added a little of the highlights flesh we used for the shear fabric into my previous top highlight for the flesh and focused on areas that I wanted to stand out or that were most subject to light from above, such as the collarbone, shoulder blades and most importantly her facial features. I also used a thin and very carefully applied selective shade of Army Painter Strong Tone to areas such as under the neck and next to her hairline to reinforce the shadows. As this paint is a wash it allows the paint beneath to show through and can unify earlier steps but you definitely don't want to apply too much or to apply it all over. The remaining steps are briefly included for completeness, but are aspects of model painting we will definitely explore in more detail at a later date. For the hair, I started with a reasonably thin mix of model colour flat brown and a touch of black which I kept thin enough that it shaded the recesses more than the highlighted areas, taking full advantage of the Zenithal Prime to show me where the highlights were needed. I then applied lighter tones to this mix to highlight. I also used a thin ink of scale colouring tents chestnut to boost the richness of the colour. Off camera I added a little extra shadow to the areas that needed to be darker, such as under the bun. I definitely find the use of reference photos to be a helpful reminder of the slightly counterintuitive way light interacts with hair. For this ball of magical whatever this is that Medea is holding, I used a similar technique, applying a thin coat of Army Painter Chaotic Red that would preserve the highlights from the primer but would colour the shadows. I've always thought of Medea as a blood magic user, so I wanted this ball of something to evoke both a magical spell and something more grisly. I added some whites to the chaotic red to paint in some additional highlights where I felt these were needed. And once this had thoroughly dried, I applied some op bright rose from the Comart Colors range to create the highlights. This is a very thin paint and therefore preserves the shadows we have already created, but on the areas that are brighter it adopts an almost fluorescent quality. It's a surprisingly useful paint, but one that is definitely a very different consistency to others we have used on the channel to date. I did find out afterwards that it is manufactured by a company called Iwata Medea, however, so clearly it is a match ordained by the gods. There seemed to be some of Medea's blood magic curling around her dagger, so I painted this in the same way and used some basic metallic colours to finish the blade. A few touch-ups here and there, along with the painting of her base, and Medea was ready to play. Nobody is more surprised than me that this effect turned out as well as it did, considering this is really only the second time I have attempted sheer fabric. 
With hindsight, however, there are some key learning points that increased my chances of success, some of which are specific to this technique, while others are more generally worth considering when experimenting with your painting. My use of reference photos ensured I had a clear vision of what I wanted to achieve, and I increased my chances by choosing a colour scheme, in this case white sheer fabric, that was easier to blend with the flesh colours than might have been the case for other sheer fabric colours. Holding off on my final highlight coats on both the fabric and the skin gave me room to adapt whatever I ended up with after the sheer effect had been applied and enabled me to blend it into the larger model. Lastly, the fact that Madea is a relatively small model allowed me to work quickly and to develop my skills before attempting this on a larger scale. I now have a technique that I can adapt should I feel it would be appropriate to use elsewhere. In short, if you haven't tried a technique before, be smart in how you attempt it for the first time. Research how the effect looks in real life and consider how you will replicate this in paint, whilst ideally building on techniques and colour combinations that you are already comfortable with so that you take iterative steps rather than massive leaps into the unknown. I hope this technique was helpful and that my process for attempting it provides some ideas whatever your next painting experiment may be. Now, if you'll excuse me, Medea appears to have summoned something ugly in the studio and I have to deal with it. <coughs> Big win! Work hard, play better and take care everyone. <coughs>